Uh, unsurprisingly focus on NHS and strikes to start to start with for Kistam. Um, a lot of catchy zingers from both sides without any kind of real progress on anything fundamental. Absolutely lively PMQs there with, with quite spirited performances from mm -hmm. both men actually on, on the state of the NHS and their respective plans for it or the respective defence and criticism. But what, what was really interesting in this PMQs was right at the top of the hour, the Prime Minister has now answered the question that he has been avoiding for weeks about his own personal situation in terms of private healthcare. He was asked repeatedly about it uh, by Laura Koonsberg at the BBC on Sunday, an interview. He refused to answer the question. He said it wasn't relevant if he used private healthcare. When I spoke to Angela Rayner, the Deputy Labour leader, yesterday and asked her what she thought, she mm -hmm. said, it's up to him if he does it, but he should come clean uh, with the public. And there at PMQs at the top of the hour, perhaps anticipating and he was going to be pressed upon it mm -hmm. again by Keir Starmer. Uh, he gave the answer that Number 10 have been trying to not give for weeks and weeks. And he said, I am registered with an NH NHS GP. I have used independent healthcare in the past. So that's actually a piece of news of something the Prime Minister wanted to avoid answering, but just mm -hmm. did uh, at PMQs there. Uh, in terms of what the discussion was around the NHS, there were two attack lines, really, from Starmer. The first was describing it as the greatest crisis in the history of NHS, taking aim at the Prime Minister again for not resolving nurses' strikes, saying he could have done this before Christmas. Instead, he's chosen to prolong the misery. And then the second sort of line of questioning from Starmer was on strike laws, actually going in there and actually tackling that head on mm -hmm. and, and using a a catch line I think we will uh, see a lot where he said, when I, I clap the nurses, you are sacking the nurses mm -hmm. and, and arguing that this will not help resolve the crisis in the NHS. But, but equally, Rishi Sunak there was, was pretty robust in his rebuttals, saying again that he had to be responsible with the public finances in terms of, of pay awards and also criticising uh, some of the uh, measures that the... Labour Party have suggested for the NHS. Uh, specifically, he criticised Labour for their unfunded, as he put it, plans for reform. Now, I asked Angie Rayne yesterday if she thought that the Labour Party should put additional money into the NHS. Mm -hmm. The Conservatives put an additional 6.6 .6 billion in funding over the next two years. Is it enough? Many healthcare professionals say it's not. Now, Labour are talking about not more money, but reform. Now, he attacked their plan, saying that uh, the plan to buy out GP contracts, and he quoted the independent health tank, Nuffield Trust, would cost a fortune and was out of date. And then the zinger from uh, Sunat there was, he said, out of date, costing a fortune, just like the Labour Party. Uh, but then, of course, as you said, there were some good lines too uh, from Keir Starmer uh, when Rishi Sunak criticised Keir Starmer for not supporting the strike laws mm -hmm. guarantee minimum service levels, which the Conservatives are trying to push through. Uh, Starmer shot straight back. There's not a minimum level of service any day in the NHS because they have broken the NHS. So really spirited exchanges from those two men there. And mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like in any way that these rows over the NHS are going to go away, particularly when we have ambulance strikes today. There are more nurses' strikes uh, scheduled. Um, that doesn't seem to be resolved. And, and, and now junior doctors also balloting for strikes. The health secretary couldn't mm -hmm. meet them today, but we understand he's going to try and meet them soon. And Starmer also, in response to uh, Sunak's jab about the Labour Party, broadly said uh, of the Conservatives, scratch the surface and you realise there's nothing there. Lots of zingers throughout. One of them from Sunak, very quickly, so I know we're out of, out of time, Beth came after a specific mention from Stephen Flynn, yes. the, the Westminster leader of SNP, name-checking the Westminster Accounts Sky News' project and, and Sam Coates in particular and referenced Boris Johnson's million pounds or so earnings over the last four months for, for speeches and Sunak had a, a, a good a good riposte. Well, yeah, that was... So So Stephen Flynn, the, the new Westminster leader of the SNP, uh, praising the Westminster Accounts uh, project for mm -hmm. shining a light on where the money goes in Westminster and using it to attack uh, Sunak over Johnson's one million uh, of earnings. Uh, and he said he did actually kill it dead quite effectively, saying, I'm not going to take a lectures uh, from, a, from a man whose predecessor, Alex Salmond, mm -hmm. uh, took money from Russia today, the the uh, media organisation. Yeah, so it's advising him it's not worth either of us talking about our predecessors, which was which was a clever uh, reply. Well worth either way checking the Westminster Accounts Project on Sky News. Beth, as always, thanks so much.